hello everybody. Today is March 16th and we're here with another week of level one news and we were talking right before we started. This is a weird week because we're doing robots and security and social today. I don't think we've ever done robot on a, a Tuesday before. It's a brave new world, Krista. And I think yeah. that uh, after last week, the chat and the patrons need to hear an update. What's going on in your oh, life? Oh, about my new life? <laughs> uh, you were gone. We're I was gone. We're still unpacking, but we are farther along than we were. All our stuff is at the new house. We're getting settled in. There are two cats next door who are now hanging out on our patio, which I'm kind of into. I think they might belong to someone else because they're really friendly, but they're, uh, they're now ours and, and you, we need names. You're coming to us from uh, the new house. Yeah. Yeah. This is a temporary office setup. You can see Rue's bed is behind me, but she's absent because my husband is making lunch and she's begging for scraps. <laughs> how, so, how many nights so far? Uh, we did our first night. I guess that was Saturday night after we got all our furniture in. So it's been like almost a full week at this point, but we're still going back to the apartment to do laundry because we don't have our laundry set up yet. And we don't have uh, all of our like cleaning done at the apartment yet that's the worst part because you're cleaning something that you're just leaving <laughs> yeah it's not fun at all and like we've had to patch the drywall and like it's just not fun i didn't do this for me i did it for someone else i did yeah. it for a security deposit i'm not getting anyway <laughs> i'm not so gonna get back bother? yeah absolutely they're gonna take one back. look at the dog remnants in that apartment <laughs> there shouldn't be any like rue was not a puppy at that apartment so like she was a good girl there Mm. so there shouldn't be anything there but i'm sure that they'll find a way to keep it so whatever it's not my problem i will never have to deal with that rental company again after like uh you don't know weeks. about the economic collapse christy <laughs> that's true that you could still, still happen you do still have a mountain of debt <laughs> uh, well fortunately uh, the money pressure is going burr so that'll drive down the debt yeah. even if the dollar amount doesn't Get, move give me that stimmy check <laughs> but if our first story teaches us anything, it's that there's never enough money to protect you from the future <laughs> because the future can come at you fast and it can really threaten your entire existence. And when that happens, you kind of got to lie <laughs> a lot. Reuters has the headline, Facebook asks court to dismiss the US government and states antitrust cases. The reason, <laughs> and I'm not even kidding when I say this, is because Facebook read the complaint from the FTC and they don't see anything that applies under current antitrust laws. <laughs> they're looking at it, they're like, is this about some other company? <laughs> it's a bold move, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for <laughs> so them. We don't do any of this stuff. <laughs> they're saying that they don't understand, but they're also quietly like shoving some money across the table. Like, let's just make this go away. And if you want uh, a beautiful example of lawyer speak, and why these people get paid those insane sums of money at this you know corporate law level read what the guy wrote about the emails from zuckerberg that were clearly antitrust violations because <laughs> he just the wordsmithing it's disgusting <laughs> but there's a beauty to it <laughs> when he said we were going to murder her and leave her body in the woods what he was talking about was a friendly game of badminton it's like uh i don't, I don't think, think that's, that's accurate true. The FTC had no comment regarding Facebook's response. Now, Facebook, I think uh, we've talked about this before. I think even the people who use Facebook doggedly understand on some level that it's bad. Don't you think so? <laughs> More than yeah. half of the employees understand that on some level it's bad. Hopefully, yeah. Apparently at Google they can't figure it out. <laughs> but uh, poor, poor maybe souls. at Facebook, I don't know. But there is one place on the internet that is just... It's one of the most unbearable places because of the user base, not the code or anything. And I don't think those people have any idea what they are. And because of that, wildly successful. In fact, beyond most people's dreams. Reddit hires its first chief financial officer as it prepares to go public. I think Reddit's got a lot of the same problems that Twitter does. There's a lot of people there. There's not really a lot of ways to monetize those people. Well, this is going to monetize them for some people. Probably not for the retail investors that pile into this this is going to take whatever value reddit is perceived to have create a mountain of debt and then it's going to become a game of how do we get back what the debt We've invested. is yeah. yeah and that's that's all it is so it can only drive reddit out of business 
or but drive that, people somewhere else. But that will take years. Yeah. Yeah. It'll, it'll be a slow decline as the site gets filled with more and more ads. And it'll be plenty of time for all the current people to sell out and do something else. Start, you, you sell your shares, you schedule your sale, you hope it lasts that long, and then you go to a startup. You start a startup. Is that not the playbook? Yeah. I mean, that kind of helped happen with some of the Reddit founders, you know, before now. But know. the one guy came back. The guy that's in charge now. Yeah. He is going to cash out. And the other Huge. guy is the guy from MIT that uh, the prosecutors drove to suicide. He's going to double dip because yeah. he already cashed out once. Now he's back. He's cashing out again. Brilliant. Terrible for society, but you got to appreciate the brilliance of the move. Now, do you remember... <laughs> Not unlike our next story. Do you remember <laughs> a simpler time? I was thinking about this. When internet vigilantism was mostly on 4chan. And the media thought it was a bad idea. <laughs> because it is. Oh, how things have changed. <laughs> Citizen Sleuth launched a slick new website to hunt down capital insurrectionists. This is on the Huffington Post. So, it's almost like they're advocating this. Yeah, I don't, I'm, you know, I, I, I'm very, I, I don't know, surprise isn't the right word, but it's not often that you and I are saying the same thing exactly, but this is a terrible idea. And uh, Remember Pizzagate? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, why would you do the FBI's job for them? Well, not only that, but I mean, this, like, what happened there it's like an onion with multiple layers. I don't know. There's like uh, when when Shrek was explaining ogres, and it's like an ogre is like an onion. There's many layers. There's many layers to that. I mean, there are some politicians that were like, "You guys need to come down to the Capitol armed and you know be prepared to reinstate democracy." And it's like, if I you know I get it, I understand. But some people are gonna do that. Like they're gonna be like, "Okay, yeah." It's like no, there was a, there was a hidden meaning. There was a deep no. That's not what that's not what happened. There's a lot of people really high up that are responsible for what happened. So if you're going to punish the citizens, you need to punish everybody and everybody who rioted during the summer. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, just wow. so frustrating. There's a guy that used to own a barbecue in Louisville. He died. He didn't deserve to die, and nothing is going to happen because he died. And he was feeding everyone. It's not right. And also, in other news related to that event, we have more and more stuff that is uh, coming out there fighting in the courts and in politics to try and, again, single out anyone with involvement. Now, in this case, <laughs> this guy was probably over the line. Yeah. Uh, Twitter sues the Texas Attorney General Paxton claiming that he retaliated over Trump ban. <laughs> they've already got some of I was like, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. This is just maneuvering. No, they've already got some emails <laughs> in Discovery from this guy that are amazing. The level of corruption is just astonishing. And he is already under an investigation from a 2015 event. <laughs> that was completely pre-Trump for some uh, insider trading, some SEC problems. So... Uh, wow. they may have, their apple might have already been rotten. The apple is rotten no matter what color it is. Which is sad. Very sad. Like Two internet bozos have to point this out to you? It makes no sense. Chewbacca's are not from what, what indoor. What is Krista? I don't know. Not what? an internet bozo. Just a regular internet bozo. bozo. Was this not an April Fool th Fool's thing at some point? Yeah. I seem to remember that. Yeah. That's funny because, you know, you wait long enough, it just <laughs> becomes a reality. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Twitter is uh, is testing an undo option after sending tweets. I didn't see that you hit the button. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. So there's like, there's, there's you got to show them the, the UI here. What is there to say about this, really? Like, oh, they took the picture out. There, there was in there. I remember. Look, there were several of them. Huh. There's a there's a video you can still click on. Yeah, but let's not do that. It was basically a giant blue button. Yeah, yeah and then it has like a timer. <laughs> and it's like, oh crap! <laughs> Choose now if you want to undo. I don't understand. I, well, I do understand, but I, I mean, talk about you know human frailty. You can't discipline yourself to wait that 30 seconds before you click the button <laughs> but after you click the button you panic and start making decisions yeah or in my case i make lots of typos and then it's just yeah. like i'm just gonna delete this and start over again proofreading <laughs> you have an unlimited amount of time before the click no 
I can't control no. myself when you talk. Got about a live it. tweet. Well, one example of someone who should have definitely used that undo button. Unfortunately, <laughs> they did not av- delete. Not available to them yet. <laughs> but boy, I understand what they were going for here. But it was bad wording. Such, it was so stupid. Well, no. they, the wording was intentional to yes. catch your attention. Yep. But they caught. The wrong kind of attention. <laughs> they caught these hands. Burger King apologizes for, quote, women belong in the kitchen tweet. It was a tweet. It literally did say, more women belong in the kitchen. But what was it talking about? It was talking about Burger King announcing on, you know, Women's Day that they're going to offer scholarships for more women chefs in the UK because there's not enough professional chefs in the UK. That is, like, the marketing people... You know, there's no such thing as bad publicity. And the marketing people are like, oh, yeah, we're so sorry. But secretly, they're like, yeah. Now, Krista, have you seen any of the new house that's not between the kitchen and the bedroom? No, no, I I go nowhere. I'm not even allowed outside. (laughs) I'm always barefoot. You will eventually need to clean it, I imagine. Yes. (laughs) Well, you know, I'm scrubbing all the time. As is my only goal as a woman. And I hope that since you've moved in there... You haven't worn any shoes. Please tell me no, that. No, 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 yeah. no. No shoes. I think we need to return to, uh, you know, architecture as late as like the 1950s, 1960s. Uh, you know, there was a main staircase for the people that live there to use. And then there was a separate treacherous staircase that was called the servant staircase, which is for literally the for the servant. Yeah. And so. It's, which one does Rue use in that scenario? Oh, the servant st- stairs. Oh, definitely. Okay. Rue, Rue's not been trained for hauling, though. <laughs> She's not like the dogs in room world. Didn't Rue vomit on some stairs recently? Uh, that was at the apartment. Yeah, that was a few months ago. I seem to remember some pee on some stairs when Rue came to visit here. Oh, she was excited. I, I cleaned it, but yeah. I use that excuse that was when, she, <laughs> when she was a puppy. She's gotten a lot better about it, but when she was a puppy, like any, t- any sort of new experience or new person, she would immediately just like pee everywhere. She doesn't do that anymore, but it was a problem for like the first year. The other question here is, do you think, based on all that, does Burger King consider their employees chefs? <laughs> I, that's the other, yeah, I was kind of like, listen, I could see this if it was like a nice restaurant, but you're Burger King. Like, is anyone really like, yeah, I can't wait to develop recipes for Burger King? Because you don't develop recipes, really, unless you're like at the very top level. Yeah, they do that in the, in the test kitchens. Yeah. Is it possible to have a restaurant like, like, so... If Burger King had chefs, Burger King would have a position that is not soul crushing, in my opinion, because I could see being, well, you know, that being fulfilling. But like she's saying, there are like you know a handful of Burger King chefs at the home office. But yeah, recipes. it's not every individual franchise is like that, though. I wouldn't like, think. Remember that scene from Breaking Bad where uh, the guy's eating the chicken nuggets? Oh yeah, like that's where that happens, not in the stores. I, even I don't think that would be all that satisfying because it's like. You know, I'm a really clever, amazing chef that's learning how to use dog food level ingredients to produce something palatable. But it's like your talents are wasted. What if you had a real kitchen? And yeah, if you invent, for example, the McRib <laughs> and you watch it generate billions of dollars and your paycheck stays the same. <laughs> capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, in capitalism, I would say don't work for Burger King. If you've got talent, go do your own thing. <laughs> Clearview. We hear a lot about Clearview and it's all bad, but they also just keep growing, it seems like, and they're becoming a real juggernaut. Lawsuits are no stranger to them. And here's another one. Clearview AI uses your photos online to instantly ID you. That's a problem, this lawsuit says. This headline is worthless. This is the California Consumer Privacy Act stuff. They can't do what they do without violating the California Consumer Protection Act. And this is not the first time we've seen this, and this is going to proceed to court, and there's probably going to be something that happens just otherworldly in order to make this okay. Because it's not okay. And you can't opt out of it, and more and more the cameras are just simply everywhere. You have a hard time avoiding it and just functioning in the world. And the thing about you know, cameras everywhere is now they are armed with AI and we know how dangerous facial recognition is, but the question, (laughs) the algorithm is silently judging me while I go buy apples. 
Yeah, and the, and the question that is constantly asked about this and, you know, the big criticism is how accurate is it? Because if it's not accurate or if it has gaping holes like, you know, skin pigmentation, then why are we using it? And one gaping hole that we didn't even know about before has been pointed out here, and it's hilarious. OpenAI's state-of-the-art machine vision AI is fooled by handwritten notes. So you can take a handwritten note, write iPod on it, and stick it to an Apple, and it's like, oh, that's an iPod. 99.7%? Sure. It's technically not Mm. wrong. I like how that 0.1% got it right. (laughs) Come on, guys. It's obvious. (laughs) This one's even better because uh, they didn't even need paper. They put these on there after the fact digitally. Piggy bank. Hmm. That's, uh, I mean, it could be a piggy bank, I guess, if you <laughs> took all the stuff out of it and put the shell back together. Are people no. just going to be walking around with, like, papers on their heads to avoid this Yeah, this kind is of like the now? banana. I was yeah, messing around the banana with, sticker. I was messing around with the, uh, the Hike Vision uh, face recognition, and if you've got a pair of glasses like mine, you can just strap some IR LEDs to the, uh, you know, like the sidebands, and then it's so bright it can't recognize your face. It's That's just like uh, it has no idea. They sell, like, baseball caps yeah. that do that. yeah course you're always walking around with really bright lights in your eyes well i mean this same kind of a thing you could just wear an ipod thing on your hat and it's like oh that's a walking ipod <laughs> no nothing to see here totally normal <laughs> that'd be funny if you know like the most popular brands of things it's like why are there a ton of harley davidson's in the mire <laughs> <laughs> let's see a computer reconstruction of that event <laughs> it's just anthropomorphic <laughs> harley davidson's walking around <laughs> They're in the store. They're concentrated in the produce section for some reason. (laughs) So, yeah, the computer vision stuff has huge flaws. And when you see a flaw like that and you think about, like, if text fools image recognition and you're walking down the street with something written across your butt, (laughs) terrible things could happen from this. Waymo simulated real world crashes to prove its self-driving cars can prevent deaths. So it recreated the circumstances of a bunch of accidents and uh, was able to show that, hey, if these were self-driving cars, it wouldn't happen. This is ultimately going to be used as a prop to convince leg- legislators that it's too dangerous to let meat bags drive. Yeah, and they talk about how most of these things that they studied was uh, single car crashes. But when they added the second car into it, they claimed that the offending car, if the offending car was a Waymo, Almost every death would be uh, a life saved. They didn't go into detail. I wonder if that was like coma for the rest of your life, but not a death. <laughs> like, did they just nudge the numbers? Well, I don't, I don't think they could predict with that level of accuracy. I think they're just saying that my takeaway from it was that even if only half of the cars driving are Waymo cars, that is still going to dramatically cut the number of driving deaths that exist. But when there is a collision, and you don't need any legislation for this, when there is a collision, if one of the cars is a self-driving car, that insurance company is going to bludgeon you with the fact it's like, well, you were driving the car. It had to be your fault. Yeah. And that's... We're just going on their word. <laughs> you don't understand. I had a, I had a that's bumper sticker of a holographic banana. That's the whole problem. And they're like, no, that's impossible. Waymo investigated itself and found that it was totally worth it and that you should totally invest in it. The AI is like, I had more than seven feet of clearance around the floating banana. And I know that bananas can't accelerate that. <laughs> and uh, when it comes to AI research, Krista, you point out something important. And that is, you know, not only was Google sort of, uh, you know, grading their own papers there. But when it comes to how we reproduce AI research, do you think that Google gave out the code for the Waymo so that you could test this yourself? No. Absolutely not. Yeah, probably not. And it turns out almost no one does when they do machine learning papers. Furious AI researcher creates a list of non-reproducible machine learning papers. So scientists publish papers, so this article says a lot of the time it's for uh conferences people want to go to conferences and present stuff they might fudge the numbers a little bit in order to get that out the door it's a pretty common thing in academia so theoretically with a published paper a reader that's sort of familiar with the knowledge domain that the paper is in should be able to take the paper and the information contained within and recreate whatever it is that you did in the paper this person says they spent a week building something that was described in a paper it didn't work and there are forums you can go to and talk about this kind of thing. And everybody that responded to him 
What, was that a metal ball? Yeah, there's the metal ball's back. Oh, sorry, that was him in the kitchen, I think. Um, the uh, everybody that responded was like, "I've seventy percent of what I try, I can't get to reproduce. <laughs> These just don't work." So you're going on the naughty list now. They're building a naughty list. Probably a good thing. It's disgusting that, like, in 2021, you must question everything, right? Yeah. Right. The most fundamental truths are under attack. Yep. And the entire research world, we just cannot trust. <laughs> it, the apple is rotten to the core. It's gonna, A lot of papers are going to be like, go to this GitHub profile and type these commands in a terminal, and then you can recreate it. And otherwise, it's just not going to be accepted for publication. I, but who's going to do that? It's so intensive labor to do that. Well, the programming part of it, that's not a big deal. Like, that's the least amount of labor. But the data set is what's problematic. It's like, oh, I used Amazon something something data set. And it's like, well, you're never going to get that. So you're but, never going to reproduce that. No, but see, they point out, in some cases, if you're doing machine learning research for Google, Google is not going to let you give out your code in yeah. any right. format. Yeah. So then what do you do? You're just stuck. You just produce a nice marketing paper for Google saying, oh, it's totally okay. Don't worry about it. Here's my paper. I mean, they kind of do that. Although, I mean, MapReduce is the thing that made Google and the paper on it is very good. But, you know, the data set, not all that useful. Well, if you're the person who has to do all that stuff, I understand that your job is going to be very stressful and unrewarding. And you're going to be miserable. And maybe sometimes you feel like you just got to get out of there. Just go outside, clear your head, just take a walk. <laughs> but now there's a new danger involved <laughs> with taking a walk only to your shins sidewalk robots get legal rights as pedestrians so if you hit one of those with your car it's your fault and if you you know are being aggressive on the sidewalk it's your fault assault people tend to just smash them. yeah, yeah. <laughs> people get really angry which i don't understand but so i think uh 550 pounds is what they set the limit at and 12 miles per hour so, I mean, if 550 pounds fell off a sidewalk onto your shin, yeah, that would be pretty bad. painful. It could roll the old ankle. So, uh, they also point out that Starship is this company who is kind of pushing for this because they have these delivery robots. And uh, they have had several that have YOLO'd into some water and some that just got stuck and, like, you know, just, like, kept trying to turn and just banging into something. That would be funny to see. <laughs> It's like, oh, you're a pedestrian. I'm not allowed to help you. So let's uh, look forward to more robots on the sidewalks. I got to think. Not that, around here. Yeah, like around here. Don't you think somebody would steal that? Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I'm you're thinking that's not happening more. And you're thinking, well, that's 550 pounds. Well, yeah, but everybody's got a pickup truck around here. <laughs> and like yeah. six meth friends. We have a problem with ATMs disappearing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, that's definitely going to happen. I found this ATM in a concrete vault. And uh, when it comes to robots navigating themselves, of course, we're constantly trying to move that forward to get better at recognizing these things. And that's what Waymo is doing. But they're not the first to reach the coveted level three. <laughs> Honda launches the world's first level three self-driving car. But they're only going to sell 100 of them because they're ultra, ultra cautious. So level three is even beyond what Tesla currently has, which is exciting. Krista, what would you pay for a level three self-driving car? Uh, not that much because I'm a cheapskate and I don't really care about cars that much. Yeah, but what's your number? For a self, like a nice self-driving car? I don't know. Like if you were looking at a car and it cost X number of dollars more to get it with a self-driving package, what is that number? I would think like 10,000 more. I don't know. This car is going to set you back 100K. Wow. Yeah. Also, I love this photo of like the suit standing around the car. They look like wax figures, like they don't know what to do with their hands. <laughs> Isn't that uh, something they train you about how to stand with your hands down like that? Yeah. To seem more professional? Yeah. Because you never know I, what to do with your hands. Right? Yeah, I mean, I kind of would probably do the same thing because like even sometimes when we're filming, I don't know what to do with my hands, but this is like, it's especially awkward <laughs> with this photo. I never would have guessed that the, uh, you know, as we inched closer to the uh, Knight Rider kit future, it's a Honda. Yeah, they were the first to do it. That is surprising. It's a pretty color, that picture. It's a pretty color car. <clears throat> so they are saying that the limited rollout is not only to make sure that it works everywhere, 
but also as they claim to educate the public because they don't want to get into that Elon Musk loophole <laughs> because what they're saying is the only time this becomes fully self-driving is in traffic less than 50 kilometers per hour. So when you're like miserable in traffic, you just turn it on and go to sleep or whatever. Although you're supposed to be able to take the wheel back within seconds. Yeah, yeah, you're still supposed to pay attention at level three. But when you break out of the traffic and it gets back above 60 kilometers per hour, it's back to all you. Which is probably a better system right now, don't you think? Yeah, especially yeah, if you live somewhere sense. like LA. Huh. Traffic out there. Well, I imagine, uh, you know, what was that in Asia somewhere, right? Yeah. Japan? So I don't know how the Japanese roads are compared to ours. Well, Tokyo is pretty crazy, I imagine. Engagement challenge. The big Microsoft Outlook hack happened. <laughs> and we talked about that last week, but we were saying, oh, I wonder what's going to happen with this. Well, it turns out a lot. Because after Microsoft announced it, it actually hadn't been used that much. But then Microsoft was like, all right, we're announcing this. This is real. You need to patch. And the threat groups, when they saw that announcement, they just, just the throttle went all the way up. <laughs> they went after everybody. At least 30,000 U.S. organizations newly hacked via holes in Microsoft's email software. That's Exchange. If you're, uh, you know, engagement challenge, if you're an Exchange administrator and you didn't patch, how's your day going? Because the ransomware <laughs> is already being deployed. Now that's in the U.S. Up to 60,000 computer systems exposed in Germany to Microsoft flaw, a flaw, according to the BSI. So this is Berlin. A lot of people running Exchange on-premise because they don't trust the cloud. It's a very bad day, very bad weekend. And? European banking regulator EBA targeted in Microsoft hacking. Yeah, well, Exchange is a popular product. And not one that you're thinking about updating every day. No, because everybody will scream at you if they can't get their email for five yeah, minutes. Right. Because it's, you know, it's critical. Is it though? Is it really? I would kill not to have like an involuntary reaction when I hear my email sound ding on my phone. Well, Krista, <laughs> if you were to kill, I guarantee you never hear that again. It's not a, not just... unlike the salad bowl ding to the audience. <laughs> <laughs> we should make that available <laughs> as a, a notification. So. <laughs> <laughs> Krista, what is your home security plan? Uh, well, we have a dog. And also, we live in the middle of nowhere now. I happen to know a few things about your dog, Krista. I question <laughs> yeah, her My efficacy. mom swears that she's like, oh, Rue would be such a good guard dog. Like, she would protect you. And I'm like, mom, she loves everybody she's ever met. Someone could break in here and she'd be like, awesome, new friend. You know what? We can test that. I'll pop on a ski mask. You set up some cameras. <laughs> just, just hop right on in. <laughs> well, you might be lucky, Krista, that you have not installed a certain brand of cameras because, oh boy, was this embarrassing. <laughs> uh, hackers expose uh, a bunch of places. Tesla, yeah, Tesla, the Tesla. Jails, hospitals, a bunch of people using these cameras. It was one of the big tech companies, too. I can't remember which one it was. Yeah, they uh, uh, they got their internal stuff was attacked, which all this stuff phoned home. But I've forgotten the name of the company. Yeah, it was started with a V, didn't it? Uh, yeah. Vercada. There you go. So... Vercada, Vercada. I think it's Vercada. I don't know anybody that's using these, so I feel like I dodged a bullet. Tesla. Well, no, I mean, uh, I don't know. Like personally, Tesla. don't know anyone. So the Tesla was a an Asian factory. It wasn't in the U.S. And that was the only factory apparently that uses these. But the jails and so many other places were using these. And if you were using these anywhere, you got compromised. Would be not unlike compromising the high vision update server. Hand hand. So. Watch out if you're running those cameras or any cameras, really, because just, you know, they're just not yeah. secure. Also, the other amazing thing about this is that they uncovered a very clear view like uh, facial recognition system built into these things. And some of these are public places where that should not be allowed. And is not allowed under the California Consumer Protection Act. So, maybe, or GDPR for that matter. Maybe we find something out there. I doubt the one in uh, China will be affected by that. Maybe because they're not using the official cameras from the CCP. <laughs> and if you are someone who likes to record your phone calls, there's already some laws about that. We're a two-party state, right? Yeah. Uh, no, one. Oh, really? One, yeah. yeah. Oh, I should just be recording all my calls then. Yeah. But I won't be using this app. A bug in a popular iPhone app exposed thousands of call recordings. This app is designed to immediately upload all of the recordings to the cloud because it is insanely brain-dead architecture. And guess what? That cloud, not secure. 
I feel like that should be like like Apple tout security and like they've got the app, the advertising thing for applications. It's like, does this application store data on my phone or does it send it to the cloud? Because this kind of thing should not send it to the cloud immediately or it should rely on Apple for like iCloud services for data storage, not its own. Now this was, they were depending on the calls, the network calls from the page being fine as long as you were already authenticated in your app. But somebody who was looking at that said, hey, the phone number is in the network request. What happens if I change that? And the answer was, you get all the recordings from that phone number. Neat. Oh, great. Yeah. Turns out that you have to uh, authenticate not just on your website, but the websites that you're pulling media from. I just recently figured out how to use YouTube DL to get the Calteras that segment them. <laughs> That's a game changer. <laughs> and finally, Bangladesh. Bangladesh is a, I think we've talked about them several times before, and it's always in the, the frame of, wow, the government shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> Especially when it comes to the internet and technology. And this is a big one. But the crazy thing here is who sold it to them considering the socio-political uh, problems between the two countries. <laughs> Bangladesh bought phone hacking tools from Israel? What? Documents show. The country's notorious paramilitary force, Rapid Action Battalion, was among those uh, trained to extract data from mobile phones. So the next time you've got a Bill Barr type telling you, oh, we can have safe law enforcement back doors, show them this. Well, technically it's not law enforcement. Well, I mean, it is in Bangladesh, but yeah. not in Israel. Now, but the crazy thing here is Bangladesh is a country whose official stance is basically death to Israel. Like they totally support Palestine and they make no secret about it. In fact, the guys from um, Celebrite, this is the, you know, those people, they were not comfortable going to Bangladesh as Jews. They had to do the training in Singapore to get around that. Uh, and yet, and no one that didn't uh, raise any flags. I feel like we should do a separate video on this, the feel good story of the American dollar bringing, you know, hate groups together. <laughs> 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 Repressive regimes breaking through cultural barriers. That's the the, the topic of that. One. <laughs> so, a lot of people inside of Israel, a lot of these uh, ethics groups and stuff like that are really trying to stop this, but it seems like Celebrite is just does what they want. If they're doing yeah, this in the open, done. imagine what's happening behind closed doors. That's I mean just you guys, you have no idea. It's it's just insane. So, if you are in Bangladesh, watch out because if they get a hold of your phone, they get everything. <laughs> Even if they don't get a hold of your phone, if you connect to one of their towers. Yeah. So. I feel like that's just true everywhere now. Like, if you're in any country, watch out. Yeah, I'm a, I suppose that uh, Europe has some decent laws about it, but whether or not that stop, stops the cops on the ground is another question. Yeah. Maybe in discovery. After you've been in jail for six months and you get some discovery, maybe that'll save you. Maybe not. I doubt in Bangladesh you get that. Uh, due process well Krista uh, I you to this week's goodbye has to be you know like finally a homeowner goodbye uh put my pinky up because I'm landed gentry do now. you have a wine glass I do but it's in the other room well, for God's sakes don't go to the kitchen <laughs> <laughs> women don't belong in the kitchen 